Hello morning. Okay, so we may start soon. Okay, uh, just for record, uh, make sure you uh, put in your matrix number in the chat box, alright, so that uh, I can know who has actually viewed it and not, alright. Do you have uh, any friends who have difficulty to access to the uh, internet? Let me know, alright, if you know any friends, alright. Thank you. So throughout the, the lectures or the presentations today, what you need to do, uh, keep listening and then uh, post any uh, questions in the chat, right? So in the chat here, okay? So that uh, we will review it from time to time, okay? And then we will see, uh, we will try to answer as much as possible and then we will uh, and the sessions all right so today we will try to uh, cover a new sections all right so here we go okay so we will cover a new sections okay called the uh, design part okay where we will deal with uh, components okay so the previous few weeks before that we only talk about uh, the design flow the concept the procedure how we generate ideas and so on okay so this next part of this uh, semesters we will deal with uh, what is components okay how we can do a simple calculations or try to analyze it right so uh, before we move into the Part, all right so what we do today we will uh, just re review our max distributions okay as we know uh, today uh, we will have uh, to from this week onwards actually we have uh, we have to do everything online for this semester even though we will start on 9 of June okay so what we need to do is we have to readjust okay such that uh, we minimize the impact okay due to uh due to online learning okay so what we can do now uh we will try to readjust our marks okay as you can see uh the marks distributions uh we have removed from the final marks okay previously we have 40 percent weightage from the final exams okay but we have now moved them out uh move them out from the equations okay in our assessment okay and we will redistribute that into the test uh, projects project presentations as well as the peer uh, evaluations right so uh, what we can see uh, we will increase the marks on the project reports okay and uh, and the presentations itself Okay, so expect uh, I will expect a little bit more uh, on that part. Okay, and also in most of this lecture, we will try to finish it in one hours. Okay, because uh, due to the internet problem of some students. Okay, so actually one hours lecture is equivalent to two hours lecture, right? Because you may take times to re review it again. Okay. So from that, uh, as we can see, uh, I have readjust a little bit on the plan. Okay, basically the topics are similar. Okay, I only readjust it because as I can see, we have covered most of the first part. Okay, the definitions of the uh, designs. Okay, how we can find the innovations opportunity and so on. Okay, so better now we move 
forward okay and go into the the design part okay of a simple component okay so as we have uh, gone through previously as we I've seen this part right okay that's uh we have conducted the site visit okay previously then you also have presented just before the lockdown all right the mco okay then also uh you have submitted okay i have checked uh, all of them okay so you have submitted the reflection report okay so what we need to readjust now okay since this is a uh, lockdown i'm not sure how many of you will be affected by the internet problem okay but then uh uh what we can do uh what we can do now we will try to see if possible we will still maintain a uh, group presentations okay as we plan okay but then uh what we can do now you may uh do the texting okay be between your friend and then uh whoever uh, can do uh whoever can do the presentations okay you can just record it and upload it to your friend and to combine them into a single video for your group presentations okay so you may want to do it in the website okay you just create a website using the google okay there is a free free tools that you can easily uh, use uh, and you just upload your video into youtube and put it in that uh, google website all right so that part uh, we will discuss more okay if you have problem okay and then uh, from there also as we have target we will have the final report okay and uh, basically uh, this this competitions or this project actually the test free cost line uh, we have to say sorry because uh, we have to cancel it in the in the middle of the competitions okay the earth day the ocean star everything cancel okay due to this mco okay but then uh, we will continue okay so that your your work will not be wasted all right so here uh, you will continue to finalize your final report okay since you already listened to the comment from the evaluator during the first presentations first presentations therefore uh, you may do some considerations okay readjust Okay, if necessary, put in. If you think not necessary, you may want to remove it. Okay, in order to achieve the simplicity and the uh, re required uh, conditions. Okay, then as uh, before, you have to keep track all your works. Okay, in the logbook, and finally, you can do your peer assessment. This peer assessment, you can. Uh, evaluate based on your previous collaborations with your friend or maybe during this MC okay it's up to you okay just don't penalize because some of your friend may have a problem may have problem uh, with the internet all right so okay so here will be the the same things okay only thing is uh, the 20 20 30 in the purple color will reflect with uh, this part okay the project and the logbook part okay that's will contribute to that to that particular uh, 40 percent okay and the 20 uh, the 30 percent for the project presentations okay so the project presentation your first presentations will get uh, 10 out of 30 from there and your 20 will be uh, cover okay after you submit your uh, video recordings okay so now we move into the this topic okay we will talk on uh, the components of engineering okay as well as the structure member okay so as we can see uh, there is a oil rig far in the middle of the oceans okay there is uh, also uh, machines to extract oil okay in onshore okay so all these things actually basically uh, is about structures as well as whenever we deal with 
whenever we deal with the the moving part then they we come with the mechanical part okay so these two things will not uh will always be required okay you need a structure to support the things and then you need another moving parts okay to operate whatever you need okay those moving part can be as simple as a simple mechanism or it can be not moving okay what is moving is the fluid okay in the pipeline okay so all these things we can consider as an engineering designs okay so uh, we will just introduce a few parts a few parts uh, that is required okay just to introduce you with the terminologies okay so that in the future when you deal with people okay then you will know what are there okay what are they what are they all right so components what is the shaft okay what is the bearings and okay, so on okay so we can see that even in this part okay there is a motor there is shaft okay there is a pump okay so this pump is not moving okay but internally there is a moving part okay to process or to achieve what is required all right so here we can see that uh, it can be a machines okay that machines can be as simple as a lever okay there is a view and excel incline plane and so on okay then from all these machines it requires the mechanical component as well as the structural part okay the structural part is to to support the components and then the mechanical part is the part that moving to get what is what is required okay so we can we will go through uh, and define some of these things right so what is machines okay so if you know want to get some ideas okay you can watch the recommended YouTube links here okay later on all right uh, but basically machines is a device that either increase or regulates the effect of a force or to produce motions okay so when we try to design for a machines okay we generally make uh, assumptions okay in order to uh, simplify our calculations to get a general some ideas on uh, how it works okay from that assumptions later on we can put some compensations in our designs to cater for all the maybe the losses okay because we may assume uh, the losses are ignored okay maybe due to frictions mostly okay and then also the strength of the material is not considered in most of the case especially in the structural part okay just the the, the forces and so on okay so that will give us a a good idea to start all right in in the design okay so as we have seen okay i i'm sure that most of the things uh you have gone through before okay we will just we will just we will just uh go through this okay fast okay just to remind you there is this simple uh there is this simple We, we we have this simple uh, mechanisms or machines okay that form from a rigid bar okay it can be a straight or curve it straight or curve okay and it's capable to rotate about a fixed fulcrum okay so there will be a three class of lever okay the simplest one where the fulcrum is in the middle okay and then a uh, second class the load is in the middle and the third class the effort okay your force is in the middle right so the idea on of this uh, simple machine is we will apply a force okay into it okay to the system or to the to the machines and we try to achieve the output force okay so the first class okay uh, lever we can see uh, the simple idea here is the pliers okay a racking pulls uh, a racking 
a wrecking bar okay where you can see that the fulcrum is in the middle okay you apply a force you have your load here with the fulcrum at the middle okay similar to a pliers okay you have your fulcrum at the middle you apply a force at the end okay to achieve your uh, efforts okay or your your desire uh hey you you apply the efforts here okay to achieve your your desired load okay then also we have uh the class two okay the fulcrum is in the middle okay but then your load is in the middle okay the fulcrum is at the end and your load is in the middle all right this we can see from the brake le uh, lever design okay we have a fulcrum at the end this is connected to to the brake okay so we have a wire here so this will be your load okay and you press from the end okay then the third type of class lever can be as simple as an ice tongue okay you have your fulcrum here you put your efforts here uh, to cater for this load all right so how to calculate this okay we can always want to calculate the mechanical advantages okay what is what is the mechanical advantages is refer to the force that we get okay the resultant force fr divided by the force applied okay how much M, uh, force you have amplified amplified okay by applying this uh, small force or, or big force okay so here this mechanical advantages we can uh, obtain okay by calculating what is the uh, forces okay acting throughout the the mechanisms or the lever itself okay for this lever case okay let's say this is a class one lever okay where you have a fulcrum at the middle so we just measure the distance from the fulcrum to your load okay so you have the resultant load and the distance as well as here okay so it's corresponding so we will we will have these equations such that the moment at one side should be equals to the others okay therefore we have fa multiplied by aa equals to fr multiplied by ar all right so here when we try to design if you design you should know what is your desired load okay so we, we assume you know the fr okay then you may also want to define what is the force or the uh, what is the force that you can apply to your system okay maybe from your hand or other things okay so that will be the fa okay applied force okay so in between that in order to achieve this particular uh, mechanical advantage you can adjust okay this length okay ar and aa in order to achieve your desired mechanical advantages okay so we will look into let's say you have your desired uh, force at the load okay 500 newton and you can only apply 550 newton force okay which is maybe five kilogram uh, force all right so uh, you want to know what is the length of this when you design what is this length it should be okay when at this part you have your desired uh, dimensions let's say it's 10 centimeter okay which is 0 0.1 meter so by applying these equations you can estimate or determine what is the uh, distance you should put for your AA right and then we will see this uh, another simple machine the so view and excel okay we have used this we have seen this uh, in the old days okay we have a winch okay you just rotate there is a view okay and there is an excel okay so this part will form an uh, an uh system okay or a machine itself okay so this wheel and axle actually behave like a continuous lever okay where the where the center is the fulcrum okay so you can see this center is the fulcrum if you draw it 
from the middle center is a fulcrum okay then your force is acting at one part of it okay at the middle and you may apply a force at the end of it right so this looks like a class 2 uh, class 2 levers all right so the function is to multiply the force as if we want okay as most of the time okay we want to multiply the force okay and then uh, also in some cases we want to uh, multiply the speed okay another simple uh, machines that we use okay traditionally is just an inclined plane all right this inclined plane idea is just to to do more work okay to achieve a greater work itself okay so what i mean by doing more work is that by using a principle of work okay we know that work equals to force multiplied by displacement okay so we have a force multiplied by displacement of let's say you are pushing something up along this plane okay so this force is applied along this plane length okay you have force multiplied by displacement what we want to achieve is a greater work okay greater work means if you just want to lift this heavy load okay from one point to a, a new level okay it may be difficult okay so what we do we will just slowly push it up okay by doing this uh, more work okay what we can gain is that we can lift this load along a height okay which is the weight multiplied by the height itself okay so this inclined plane is again if we compare the mechanical advantages okay this is our the f will be our input force okay or the applied force whereas this weight is our uh, resultant uh, force okay when we compare okay these two we will gain a mechanical advantage from there okay you may able to to lift a greater load okay by pushing a smaller force right so based on that inclined plane uh, ideas actually screws work on that okay so most of the time you can see this screw thread itself have a slanted uh, plane okay so we will calculate actually the screw is designed based on that inclined plane idea right so therefore this loop will provide that kind of mechanical advantages okay so in this screw machines okay like a screw jack okay you can lift up a very heavy truck okay a lot by just turning okay so you may have to turn a lot okay but then this one will just move very slow all right so this is the idea right then we have a pulley the pulley itself uh, we have a pulley with the rope right okay so a single pulley uh, only change direct directions of the force okay if we only use a single pulley okay a single pulley means uh, I will draw okay so single pulley you have a one single pulley if you just put your rope okay you are pulling here so your object will move outwards all right so that's why we say single pulley only change directions of the force okay but then it doesn't have any mechanical advantage okay but then if we are applying it them in in pairs okay the blocks and tackles okay like this a pairs then yes we will gain the mechanical advantage okay and the mechanical advantage it depends on the number of rods that support the weight okay let's say this is 100 newton okay we have one rope two rope three rope and four rope okay so all this will will try to uh, this handle or support this four four part will support this one hundred newton okay so therefore we can reduce or we gain the mechanical advantage okay so since this is a single rope so meaning to say this 25 newton should be equals to what you should provide right okay so we can see all this uh, like different type of uh, designs of the pulley okay 
you can combine okay so most of the case uh, one simple ma machines may not solve the problem you may want to combine them okay and turn them into a complex machines so now we have this uh, pneumatic and hydraulic systems okay I guess in oil and gas you may deal with this more okay it deals with the pump compressors okay but then uh, in most of the case okay we just want to use a hydraulic or pneumatic okay pneumatic refer to the air type of fluids okay use it as the medium okay so what we do we will push from one side and we gain uh, work okay on the other side okay so you may use one pound of work uh, as your force okay to lift up a 10 pound load right so how we can do that we use a Pascal law okay saying that any in the confined cylinders okay so pressures will be the same okay and whenever there is an increase in one side it will be increased on the others okay so when you increase the pressure over here pressure on the other side will increase accordingly right so from that we can see that you need to push a lot okay in order to obtain this okay because of the volume conservations okay you this volumes that being displaced will be equals to this small volumes okay but then a uh, this small displacement but then the same volume all right so now any questions so far you can check okay you can ask any questions if there is any okay no, no, no. Mm, okay mm. I guess so far no questions okay so if you have questions don't worry we'll go back again just keep uh, typing in the chat box right so now okay let's move on right. so now after the the simple machine itself now we will look into their components okay again all these components are the common components that we usually see okay we will not go into those at once or any uh, odd components okay because our idea is just to uh, introduce you with all this simple part okay so that you're aware of them okay so in the mechanical power system itself we may gain power uh, we can gain power by using combinations of this mechanical components such as gear belt and pulley chain and sprocket shaft as well as power screw okay they their purpose is to maybe change directions as well as the speed or torque okay and also we try to amplify the power okay which may be equivalent to the torque itself okay so we have gears okay I guess most of you knows what are gears okay then belt and pulleys sprocket and chain that you can found in the conventional motorbike okay then there is a shaft okay there is this part rotating and they are connected with this road okay so this is the shaft okay it can be a short it can be a long okay so whenever it transmit rotations we call it as shaft okay then also we have a power screw okay again the screw ideas comes in right so all this will actually uh when we use them in pairs we have to be careful with directions of the rotations okay in general for gears okay the matting pairs 
have the opposite directions okay so gears number one and gears number two their rotations will be always opposite with each other okay when we combine more than one gears okay then we can see that this gears one rotates gear two right okay and gear three together okay since gear two and three are uh, stick together or join together therefore they will rotate together right so and this gear 3 will rotate the gear number 4 okay so if possible you may want to uh, draw this out okay to check the directions okay then also for a sprocket or chain type of drive then the matting pairs itself now give you the same directions in most of the case okay if this is the arrangement yes it will give you the same directions this rotate the chain will keep rotating and give you the same directions okay if some cases if they intend to obtain the the opposite directions they may form something like this okay that would be in the belt itself okay you can have like this okay then in this case you will obtain an opposite directions of rotations okay. here we will uh, calculate a simple speed as well as the torque okay due to the gears or the sprocket okay so the ideas is very similar okay whether it's gears or, or chain or belt okay the calculations will be depending on the size of your pulley your gear or your sprocket okay so here this is the dimensions okay multiply by the speed the n1 referring to the speed okay n2 as well referring to the speed of your rotating uh, components the pulley the gear or the sprocket right so they should be equals okay in the in the formula itself okay why they are they are equals because they they should form the same amount of force okay so when this rotate this force is actually pushing the other side to rotate therefore we form this force equals Okay, generated by this should be equals to the force generated by this. Okay, therefore they are equals. Okay, so if in the design itself, okay, you may want to do a try and error. Okay, to obtain uh, the the suitable size of your gear or the pulley, right? So what we need, we may want to to define okay we try with the combinations of the size of your of your pairs okay you have d1 and d2 okay you just do a try and error okay in order to achieve what you want okay so the first thing first you may use this to identify what is the uh, results of the speed okay by changing this okay so you have d1 divided by d2 okay should be equals to n2 divided by n1 okay we can see that their relations actually inverse proportional right okay so if we know or we try with these combinations okay and we know what is our desired output speed okay let's say this is our desired output speed then we can adjust this speed accordingly all right or we, if we know what is the combinations of speed that we want okay then we can try with the comp the suitable combinations of the size or the dimensions of the pulley or the gear or the sprocket right so once we know these ratios of the speed itself we can apply it to determine the torque okay being produced by the by the gears or the sprocket systems itself okay so these two let's say now we know this speed 
alright and then for sure we also should know what is our input talk okay it can be from the motor okay if we do not know our input talk then we should know our output talk okay what is the load that we intend to to lift up okay so here if this gear is intend to like do like a hinge okay you may have a force on the load over here okay then you can calculate what is the required force okay for your yeah what is the required force okay then from this force itself we can recombine them okay to determine what is the required torque okay from there we can uh, determine accordingly okay to achieve your desired requirement okay i saw a comment there does gear consider as pulley for simple machines as it change directions for the as the force applied uh yes you can just consider gears itself as a simple uh machines but uh as actually the gears work like the the lever okay you have the a a right okay you have your load okay f a okay so that's why the gears actually is a, a kind of machines okay as described by the lever okay so we can see here we can try this simple problem itself okay we already know the speed and we know the applied torque okay what you need to get is the driven torque okay so what you do you just apply to your equations okay three parameters known okay then you can get the unknown all right then next will be the shaft okay so what is the functions of a shaft okay generally the shaft is just a rotating road okay that's try to transmit power from one part to the other okay that's because let's say for a motor itself okay this motor cannot directly connect to the pump okay some most of the time okay because the construction and uh, and other things so what we can do is we try to use a shaft okay that connect them to the pump itself okay so all this part is the coupling okay connecting one shaft okay this one is coupling to join the other shaft okay to your pump all right so this shaft is just to transmit the pumper from part one to part two right part number two so as shown in this animations okay this is the shaft okay then let's say this is uh the coupling okay so you can see the coupling use a screw to tighten to connect this this may be uh let's say this is a gear okay so you have a gear one here then also we have another gear here gear two right so they are connecting them together so whatever uh, power transmitted here it will be transmitted to the other side right so in designing the shaft itself uh, the most critical uh, things that we will consider is the twisting okay because you are just rotating bringing one energy or power from one side to the other so in between the transmissions from one one point to the other okay there is a twisting okay so this part must rotate first before the other part must will rotate okay so there is a twisting so in designing a shaft okay you will consider the twisting uh, moment and so on right then uh, in order to form a smooth part of uh, machines itself okay we will need additional uh, components okay to support or to to join them together okay or to bring uh, uh, 
desired motions and so on okay so you may use a bearings okay so bearings uh, as the name suggests it carries load okay it bears a load okay so this is a simple ball bearing itself okay containing inner inner ring okay and the outer ring okay in between them we put a steel ball okay we call it steel ball so therefore we form a, a ball we call it ball bearing there is a roller type and, and other types okay the idea is still the same we have two two rotation rot two rotatable part okay and in between we may put a roller and other things okay the idea is that we intend to facilitate the desired motions by minimizing the frictions okay so as you have i guess maybe you can see this okay more common to common people all right so there is this part that can rotate very smooth right okay so the idea is that they will put maybe a ball bearing inside the good one okay and the construction is as such okay why they can minimize the friction is that we know that rolling frictions is much much lower than the sliding friction okay if we want to slide something across a rotational part okay if you have if we generate a lot of heat okay due to the the frictions okay in order to reduce this friction okay in the rotating part okay in the palm and so on then we may need a bearing okay to reduce the frictions inside them all right so this rotation this sliding effect will be mitigated by adding adding the the ball okay that's keep rolling inside okay so it's easier to roll that's why a ball when you kick it it will roll instead of slide okay most of the time okay so if you want to see more about the bearing calculations and so on okay in selections of the bearing we will uh, basically look into the the lifespan of the bearing okay that's why in many machines they will have what we call uh, uh, maintenance okay maybe 10,000 times even in the car okay uh, 5,000 kilometer you have to do a certain maintenance right so that is where they can estimate the lifespan of the bearing itself okay you may want to uh, check the manufacturers uh, website okay they may generally provide you with uh, some uh some bearing calculations tools okay or some equations for you to calculate or to select okay so now uh we also can see uh how we generally uh draw okay in the drawing okay because in the future you may deal with drawing most of the time right so you may sh you should able to check okay so bearing will be represented like something like this okay so what is inside this is a, a type of roller okay in some some type of bearing you may see that it contain a circle okay then that will be a a ball bearing okay so similar to this what they draw is actually a cross sections okay you just draw a cross sections of this okay then you will review this sections and the outer ring sections okay with the ball okay so in this case this is a roller type okay in this case it's inclined roller type okay type type roller okay sitting in the opposite directions okay then inside you can see there is a shaft there is a nut okay there is a seal okay okay to prevent leaking okay there is a screws okay to combine them together okay there is a seals here as well all right to prevent the leaking okay so we can we have to interpret all this drawing okay by looking at the schematic okay so from time to time okay when you check more then you will see more okay and you'll be able to uh, read the drawing itself okay
then also uh, in some cases when the friction part is not that critical or let's say it's a low-end machines okay and they don't they don't uh, they don't rotate that much okay bearing have quite high lifespan okay in general okay they can sustain a properly select bearing they can easily sustain for months keep rotating okay that's why they, they usually generally use in motors okay parts that keep rotating okay so that they may rotate more than millions time okay but then if you don't need that long span okay you may just use a slave okay a slave is just a basically a smooth part okay it can be made from a kind of treated steel okay or a nylon or plastic or polymers okay the ideas are similar okay you just insert it okay the slave okay to represent the, that kind of uh, the bearing okay the ideas for of slave uh, it's not actually to re to really reduce the frictions okay but then it have this so-called functions to reduce friction because in most of the time okay we will check what type of material again okay, and how they they what is their coefficient of friction between these two material okay let's say this is a, a kind of plastic okay and your shaft itself okay okay you can see the shaft also is drawn in this way okay to represent a rotating part all right so most of the drawing they will draw in this way so if let's say this shaft is made of a, a kind of metal so you can always check the coefficient of frictions between this metal and the plastic itself in generally they are lower than than maybe a uh, metal with a uh, rubber or whatever it is or metal on metal okay so from there you can somehow reduce some friction okay same time at the same time the slave also have a functions uh, to to let's say uh, reduce the wear to the main body of your structure okay so you can see that the shaft itself is not directly in contact with let's say this is your machine's body right the the hatch part okay so if something happen okay the wear and tear will only occurs at the slave okay not on the body okay and it must it will be much easier and cheaper to just replace the slave than to replace the whole body or the casing or housing of your machines right okay this is the the main idea of using this all right then uh, the power screw itself uh, again the function is to transmit power by converting angular into a linear form okay we can see that in some cases okay let's say a 3d printing a 3d printer ball screw okay so they are rotated okay using a ball screw okay or some cases if you intend to achieve a mechanical advantage then you can also use a ball screw okay uh, or the power screw in that case you form like a, a screw jack all right then uh, the other mechanical parts or components okay we require will be the clutch and brake okay why this clutch and brake are required so you can see that uh, if you have a manual car transmissions okay manual transmission car right so in general when we shift gear okay the the mechanism inside will actually in engage with different uh, gear ratios okay S but then our engine okay our engine keep rotating okay you you can only control the rotations of our engine by pressing the pedal okay putting more more fuel lesser fuel right okay so these engines will keep rotating producing uh, rotations if we shift gear okay while the the rotating uh, rotating input keep rotating okay what happened is that when we change gear okay this 
coupling okay you bang with the others part okay and cross a lot of damage okay so what we need is we add a clutch okay so this clutch is to engage and disengage power transmissions okay so whenever we try to shift the gear okay we will press the clutch pedal okay and this clutch actually disengage okay let's say here we have a clutch okay to connect to the other side right so so what happened is that when we press the pedal to disengage the clutch okay then these rotations will not transmit to here okay when we engage the clutch then this rotation will transmit to the other side all right so to prevent that we temporarily disengage without stopping the engine okay this is the the function of the clutch okay to temporarily disengage or sometimes we always want to disengage and when we press we engage it okay it depends on what or when you you want to use it all right then also uh for a uh, brake systems okay when we see a berhenti sign or stop sign we will press our brake right okay so this brake is the simple one we use a uh, caliper type of brake okay so we press and this hydraulic palm to the other side and push and grab our our rod uh, this okay the brake this and so on okay the functions of the brake is just to decelerate the speed of the motions if you decelerate long enough then you will stop right uh, when we try to join parts together okay most of the time we may want to join them together due to the constructions of the component itself okay therefore uh you may have reverts let's say okay so this reverts when we use it okay we will see this round type okay we call that as revert okay so how it functions we have this revert part okay this head is what you see outside okay what we see inside we will drill a, a hole we insert these sections into it okay and then we use a, a reverter okay to actually pull this out okay so when we pull actually this this part is softer than this head okay this head is slightly bigger okay you can see that this head is bigger than this rod okay so this one will push in okay and what happened when we push this will start to bend out okay so this one will start to bend out okay and form the other head inside Okay, so this is the idea of the reverts, right? Then we can also have a screw type, okay? And then we will do welding to join two parts together as well, okay? So the functions is just to hold two parts or members together. Okay? Then for spring, the spring is to store mechanical energy and return the energy into the force okay when we desire it okay we can see a spring everywhere okay spring to absorb shock impact okay then we have a spring to have this automatic center punch okay so they store the energy and return them into the into a force okay when we desire right so in most of the time you can uh, draw them okay in the drawing and again you may want to use some kind of symbols okay okay to represent it. for example in the the piping part okay you may want to use uh, this symbol okay to represent a 90 degree elbow for a wet butt welding type okay if we are using a socket welding type okay so you see the ending will be different okay so from there you can interpret the drawing easier okay we cannot draw the thread inside or we cannot draw welding inside right sometimes so this will help us to actually transmit the ideas or the informations through a drawing right 
then we have others uh waft symbols and so on right and then we have spring symbols okay the dashboard okay absorbers and so on right if uh, it is uh, if we require more details then we may have to produce the so-called assembly drawings okay for a complex part okay you can have the explode showing every single part and how they are joined together okay through a center right so all these things will be entered okay put inside one center and combine to form this uh, mechanical part so questions time let's check if there is does gear consider pulley yes already answered is the power transmitted by the shaft is equal along every point of the bar road if uh yes for the power transmit through the shaft we would generally assume 100 percent okay or 99 percent okay because of the twisting okay so if you are using a very soft shaft okay for example you are using a shaft made by rubber okay this kind of material so if you turn from one side it may uh, get the response on the other side slower okay so in that case you have a uh, more losses okay the losses will be due to the uh, the losses is due to you use the energy to twist the the rubber okay so the shaft the rubber shaft will twist first before it being transmitted to the other side okay but if we use a properly designed shaft okay generally the power transmit from one end to the other end will be almost 100 percent okay 99 point something okay so is there any manipulator manipulative component affected the power in shaft is there any manipulative component affected the power this one i'm not so sure what you ask maybe you can describe more later right okay so we will move on to the structural member okay so on the structural members uh, generally we will use beam okay so this beam is just to bring support okay so beam is a structural member that are loaded by force applied in the right angle okay so you we can see beams okay everywhere okay in our house bridge and so on right so these beams is to sustain load okay acting 90 degree to it okay so we can do a simple calculations okay we may want to put a palm a motor in the middle right so this beam now will have a functions to support this palm or the motor and so on okay or any machine it is okay so this simple beam is to support by having two ends okay so in between you can have nothing okay so these two ends will provide the sufficient force or reaction force to support this load okay so i guess this you can calculate easily in the mechanics okay so i just bring you the ideas how they can be applied right so similar you may have your machines or components or maybe even a pipe okay transmitting oils chemicals or whatever it is okay so they are containing loads okay so you can estimate the type of load acting on it right and this is the cantilever okay that are supported by one end okay and the other side are free to move okay but we don't want it to really move that much right only allow a certain deflections okay 
so there are two types of uh, load that we can apply the point load type and the uniform load type okay so uniform load type we can see it is represented by a series of arrows okay so how we can uh, describe from the actual part okay let's say you have a motor okay or a pump okay so these pumps actually they need also a support right and they have a leak right so if we put it here this leak we can see that the actual force or the load being transmitted is actually here okay and this is how we should use it to calculate okay in for starting yes we can apply this to get the general idea okay but then when we want to get into a more detailed part then we have to identify where the actual load is actually being applied okay depending on the leg okay in this kind of cases it can be something you put something like this then yes everything is connected here right so then in this case we will use a uniform kind of load right then we can also know that due to the support of the loading itself the beam will, will bend and it will be subjected to two force okay the tension and the compressions the compression part will occur on the upper part okay upper part of the layers okay whereas the bottom part of the layer will undergo tension okay because you can see that this part is longer now okay but then this part is shorter okay means they are being compressed compressed okay so this kind of tension and compressions uh, when we design we should not let it more than the allowable stress okay the allowable stress can be determined by either a u strength or a ultimate strength okay ultimate strength referred when the object is actually separate into two parts okay a fracture pipe okay so we don't want this to happen okay and in engineering safety always come first okay we don't want it to cause any accidents okay so in our design usually we will design in this range okay before it start to yield okay before it start to uh, being inelastic right then we have to stop all right so therefore most of the design we will check and see what is the allowable stress the allowable stress can be a u strength and ultimate strength okay it can be either one okay so if you want to use it for support then yes we may use a u strength okay but if we want it to to act like a let's say a mechanical type of a fuse okay fuse like electrical fuse okay when a power is large enough the the fuse will cut off the power right so in that case if you want a type of mechanical part that if the load is high enough uh, it should break uh, then you have to uh, consider the ultimate strength okay so it depends on your criteria or your fun uh, your purpose okay and then uh, for the beam itself the shape of the beam is very important okay the shape of the beam is important uh, in order as it will determine the load carrying ability all right so this uh, shape of the beam okay so if the this is a long type okay so if it the cross section is in the flat type okay if the cross section is the flat type then it have a different we call it as section modulus okay whereas if the beam it itself okay this is a beam with a cross section of such okay then this is on H type of uh, cross section then again they have a different section modulus okay based on our 
experience okay without calculating which type do you think it can carry more loads the flat type or the on edge type any ideas okay you may think of this okay otherwise uh, you have to do some calculation okay but then uh, you can check flat uh, not really okay then we will have to check the sections uh, modulus okay in flat type it will provide us a sufficient contact area okay but then in terms of weight carrying okay this load will be applied on this okay therefore when we calculate the section modulus okay when we calculate the section modulus we will use for example in this case a rectangular uh, cross sections member okay when we cut through it okay a rectangle we have a dimensions a and b okay so the section modulus will be given by 1 over 6 multiplied by a b square a b square okay so you can see that the b is being square right so meaning to say if this height the b is higher the section modulus will be higher right so that's why it should be the on edge type will be able to carry higher load okay in terms of the same quantity okay to form the the beam itself okay then for lumber we have a lot of lumber in saba right okay for simple cases we use lumber to act as a as a beam okay so the amount of load that the lumber type of beam can support can will be determined by the section modulus as we have seen previously then also the allowable fiber stress because the lumber itself mainly is the fiber the fiber directions will help us to determine some of the characteristics okay which we just have to take care or uh, know okay at the moment okay then the beam span how long it is the type of load and the type of support all right so the calculations we can just take this four most commonly used uh, formulas to calculate okay where the beam modulus will be the k okay so if this is higher then the more weight or load we can carry right but then for a uh, lumber type okay kayu type okay then there is a allowable fiber stress okay the s so this s will will also affect okay the, the type of the amount of weight it can carry okay but then the longer the beam it is again then it will lesser the amount of load that it can carry okay so in some case it's necessary to identify the size of the beam okay in that case if you want to identify what is the size of the beam then we have to look into this sections modulus okay if we know this part we know the length we know the let's say a fiber type okay then we have to identify this k okay and this k will tell us what is the size of the beam the minimum one that we can use okay so in our calculations we always use the with a lot of assumptions everything is perfect right so that's why when we come up with this size of beam this size of beam will be able to carry this load right so in order to to compensate for any kind of errors and other things we may want to have slightly bigger than that okay so this is how we can um, design and compensate for it okay so here we can see several problems okay what is the maximum power uh, point load that can support for this size okay we calculate the the k from this dimensions okay then 
the length we already know okay the fiber stress we already know okay just apply the equations and we see that this is a point load right so point load simple beam point load at the center okay you will get the answer okay same thing what is the smallest size of two inch width two inch width okay so this part will give you some input to the k itself okay s is given load is given it is a uniform uh, load is w okay and the length is given okay so in this case you have to identify the size of the beam right so the size of the beam you already know the a and b is unknown okay so you can determine okay so in computational time okay nowadays we have software actually to calculate analytically okay inside the the computer okay to estimate what is the kind of deflection that it occurs okay this is the displacement that it can occurs and then you can also predict the kind of stress acting inside the 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 beam itself okay so all this software will be helpful when our fundamental is strong okay because the software will generate any result okay that you input okay the problem is that if we do not know how to identify the type of load or the type of support the proper support okay then uh, we cannot predict what kind of uh, expected stress or expected uh, expected load that actually occurs okay so if we do not able to expect then if we only depends on the software it may give you a wrong answer okay because the software itself have a lot of setting okay and you need to properly set to get the right answer okay so if you see a, a me match like this okay it doesn't mean it is correct it's only give you an ideas of how it should deflect and so on right but it may not correct if you put in the wrong material property and other things all right so those fundamentals are required all right so that's all for this part okay and we check uh, if there is any more questions before we end this okay previous question what can we change in the shaft to change its power such as reduce or increase the power oh okay for the shaft itself we cannot actually change the power okay the shaft the purpose of the shaft is just to transmit power okay from one end to the other end okay so if you want to change the type or let's say the torque and so on then you need the gears okay so we need the gears the pulleys and other things to actually combine all right with the shaft okay you can see in let's say this line okay let's go back to the shaft for a while okay so you can see that uh the shaft itself this is the shaft okay so this shaft will not do anything except transmitting power from one end to the other okay if we want to modify the type of torque the speed and other things then we need this kind of component okay to help you all right they only transmit from one end to the other all right okay any more questions if no i think uh that's all and we will plan for the next one probably after 9 of june okay after that because in this uh there will be a, a long holiday okay for those who who celebrate hari raya okay then selamat hari raya right then for those who are celebrating kamatan and hari gawai then yes okay then you can celebrate okay but then make sure no mass gathering right okay so 
Yes, okay. Raya dulu, ya. Yeah. Okay. So, selamat hari raya, and then kotobian tadau kamatan dan selamat hari gawai. Right? Okay. No more questions. Okay. Then we will end, and I hope you enjoy these sessions. Alright. Bye.